Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards, and today we're taking a look at another AJAZ. You may have noticed that AJAZ has been releasing quite a number of keyboards as of late, and whereas I used to have some just gripes about how certain things were done with AJAZ boards, it wasn't that I disliked them, it's just that they didn't, I don't know, they kind of fell outside of what my expectations were. In this past year, I want to say, every AJAZ board that I have reviewed just gets better than the last one that I reviewed, and I'm actually quite liking them, and I've been using them as my daily driver a lot more often than I used to. And yes, I have access to aluminum keyboards as well as plastic keyboards, but I'm enjoying using the AJAZ keyboards. Not only do they feel good, they sound good, and their feature sets just seem to be there and they're they're working i mean there's no i haven't come across any show stopping issues as i've had with other keyboards so today we're actually taking a look at a keyboard that ajaz themselves has sent out to me for review um, of course they do not pay me for the review all they do is send me the keyboard all of my reviews are my opinions and my opinions alone um, they get to see the video at the same time you do and that's with all of my videos. So today we're taking a look at the AK870, uh, which is the TKL version of AK series they've been putting out lately. There's an AK820, AK820 Pro, AK820 Max, and those are 75% keyboards, I do believe. I guess they're going with 82 key, and this is the AK870, so 87 keys but this is their TKL. So as you may know, I am partial to TKL keyboards, so I should probably enjoy this one, but I've got no preconceived notions. Like I said, I've been liking a lot of their keyboards that have come out lately, and I'm hoping that this is gonna be one that I like as well and make it my daily driver for a while. But anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it and see what we've got in the box. So in the box, we have a standard um, nylon braided USB-C to USB-A cable. This is actually one of the nicer ones. I prefer the nylon braided ones. As I, I think just, uh, they don't feel as cheap as rubberized to me. We have ex three extra switches and three extra keys in case we want to do some modifications. Let's take a look at this switch here real quick. We have a switch that has a diffuser for the LEDs. It is a linear switch, but it has a heavier spring, which is my kind of linear. And we have mm, the top kind of feels like a polycarbonate, but I'm not sure. I will have to look up to see if they have the specs on the switch, but it is a nice linear. It has a long pole. I would guess maybe 3.6 to 3.8 travel. And and it has a nice bottom out. It's a little bit deeper, not as glassy as other bottom outs on the linears that have been coming out lately. It's actually a little bit muted. This might make for a good thocky build. And the extra keycaps are print, scroll lock, and pause break, or just pause. We have a standard wire switch and keycap puller, and we have the manual, the AK870. Now this is a triple mode, I don't know if there's an AK870 Pro, but this is the AK870 and it looks like it's a pretty complete manual. We're gonna put it aside in case we need to look back at it here later. And here we are with the HS AK870 and I gotta say, I quite like it. I mean, I love that the screen is at an angle, only a couple of keyboards. I wonder if this is, no, it's, see this whole thing, I think, if I'm not mistaken, those extra switches are there. Yeah, this is, wow, now that is cool. So if I want the keys and I don't want a screen, I got to focus on work. Well, just put in those three extra switches and I've got those spots there. But if I want a screen and a knob and a screen that I can actually look at because it's angled at me <laughs> instead of being angled up as if I am lurching over the keyboard like this no this is the angle that screen should be at because that way you can actually see what the animation is 
And I got to say, I love that little, I'm going to guess that there's an LED under there and it diffuses. Uh, we do have a metal knob, like I said, that comes off. It looks like it's a standard D knob that has a shallow, doesn't have a collar and it's very shallow. So I'm sure that we could find other switches, but they're going to be constrained with the spaces there, though that black switch looks fine with me. Um, the keycaps look really nice. Uh, I like the Legends. They're nice, crisp, clear. Um, they're bigger than, you know, your average, and I like bigger. Uh, yeah, the Legends actually look pretty clean on here. Let's see how thick these keycaps are. All right, we got 1.5 millimeter double shot cherry ABS keycaps. I am very happy with the fact that a lot of stock keycaps are now no longer throwaway. Whereas for the longest time, and I know there's some of you out there that are watching kind of felt the same way as I did that, well, I prefer bare bone, but if I have to buy one with something already preloaded, the keycaps and the switches are just coming off and getting replaced. But nowadays we're actually getting some keycaps that are decent and I think they're good to go. And for a lot of people, they're going to be more than sufficient. Um, this is an interesting colorway. I think it's probably their own. It has this um, cyan, maybe. It's a really light green with the uh, black on white. And a little bit of round of a font for the, um, for the keys. I mean, that M definitely has the curves there at the top. But let's check out. What we have as far as stabilizers it does look like we have a polycarbonate plate yes and we also have the hi-fi layers which is the pet sheet above the pcb and the ixpe foam now <clears throat> and we also have what feels like some pretty dense foam down below the pcb there let's take a look at the stabilizers they are plate mounted and they are nicely lubricated. They are not overly lubricated. We see that we have lubrication both on the wire, right where it meets the plastic on the elbow. And we also have lubrication inside of the stem housing. Perfect. It's not too much. It does not look like we have the ability for screw-in stabilizers, only plate mounted. But once we lock these into place, and see that there really is hardly any give whatsoever. I mean, they're moving a tenth of a millimeter, if that. But what do they sound like? Let's talk. Yeah, I'd say for most people, this keyboard is going to be take it out of the box, plug it in, and go. Because it's it's just fine. I mean, we do have a bit of a taller bezel here. Um, the height on this is, let me see. I think it's kind of tricky because it has those two edges. But if we look at the base height right here, we're looking, oh, it's actually not that tall. 20 millimeters of height. So... I think it'll work just fine then with the uh, wrist rest. Most standard wrist rest will work fine. Yeah, it's almost the same exact level. So it's this inner edge that I actually kind of like. It has a, um, it almost makes it look like two tones when it's really not. It's, or is it? But it is two tones. Yeah, this is grayish and this is black. So it's kind of almost like they grabbed a TKL and set it in a bigger case and being that i like uh, I'm, I'm very retro i'm a retro boy old man i love the um the thicker bezel so it just gives me and i love how it kind of blends in but at certain angles you can tell that it's definitely two color that's a very interesting design on the back we can see that we have a magnetic pocket for the 2.4 gigahertz dongle and it does have a jazz so it's branded with the keyboard so we know if we ever come across this you know on the floor step on it like a lego piece we're going to be like oh it goes to one of my a jazz boards and i've only got x number of them so 
it'll only take me a few minutes. Plus, I mean, most of them are going to have pockets, so you can just go through and see, okay, this one, this one's got it, this one's got it. Oh, this one doesn't have it. It's probably this one. Boom. There you go. We have a Windows and a Mac switch, and then we have, oh, it's already on Bluetooth. Oh, I hope the battery didn't drain. Oh, it looks like the battery might have drained. We'll put it back on USB. Let's see what it looks like with the lights on. All right, so we have a animation, like a boot logo there. Obviously, we're not going to have the right times, but yeah, the battery, as you can see, the battery indicator there, it's completely dead. Somehow it got shipped with the Bluetooth switch on, but that's no big deal. We can charge it. I'm going to take this little indicator off. It has their logo. I got to say, I, I like that. It does remind me of a pricier group buy keyboard that's aluminum, but you know what? I like it. That is a cool design. You got to love the date that it's set at, 20.99, and it's the 25th month and the 45th day, and it's 26 hours. <laughs> We're definitely going to have to plug this in. I bet there's probably a firmware update, but we'll get to that point here in a minute. So, okay, so we, um, we need the battery to charge a bit, but while we do that, why don't we go ahead and, oh, wait a minute, I did not see this. Huh. It just has these just stickers. Right, so they have protective plastic over it, but it says cool there. And this is life. Weird, huh? All right. I can't say I get it, but I definitely, uh, I don't disagree. Life is weird. <laughs> and cool. Is this like a cool spot or is it the keyboard is cool i don't know but it has me asking questions and maybe that was the whole point <laughs> just the specs today we are taking a look at the ajaz ak870 a three mode tkl that includes a detachable screen and knob module it is loaded with a gasket mounted flex cut pc plate as well as a flex cut south facing three and five pin hot swap compatible PCB that includes the hi-fi layers of PET and IXPE above the PCB. It is preloaded with AJAZ Maillard linear switch that have a 56 gram bottom out force and double shot PBT cherry keycaps. It also includes extra switches and keys to cover the detachable screen and knob module. It comes preloaded with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery and weighs in at 945 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 20 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 31, providing for a default typing angle of 7 degrees. Raising the middle set of fold-out feet will take the back height to 38 millimeters and the angle of typing to 10 degrees. Folding out the final set of fold-out feet will take the back height to 44 millimeters and your angle of typing to 13 degrees. The MSRP for this keyboard is $99.99 with the screen and knob module and $89.99 without. Links below. All right, to download the software, we're going to want to go to the AJAZ website and search for the AK870. You're going to have several different results there. So you do want to make sure that you're getting the one that's for the one for the specific one that you have. Now, there does appear to be an upgrade package. I kind of figured there would be. I've seen it. AJAZ push out a lot of firmware updates, which is good. They're keeping up and fixing any issues they might find. So it's best to download both of them if there is an upgrade package available. Um, sometimes a driver will allow you to do it, but I think it's best to do it from the individual program. Now, before you start this, you do want to make sure that you are on power that's not going out. Either your PC is connected to a battery backup or you're on a laptop that has a, ba a charged battery. As we can see, the update is pretty quick. It should not run if you don't have the correct keyboard plugged in, but I would suggest only having that keyboard plugged in when you run it. Now, once we run the update, we can go ahead and go through the installation process. Once installed, it opens up and we are presented with the primary screen, which allows you to either map keys on the top layer or map keys on the function layer. 
you have both a toggle and a momentary type of function layer. So you can either toggle completely over to the function layer or you can momentarily access one of the keys mapped on the function layer. We have a very basic macro editor and then we have the LED selection. So we could select the particular LED effect that we'd like to have on the keyboard um, from the software itself, though there is also a key combination. Then we come to the screen section and we see that um, unlike other keyboards, we actually have the ability to download the, the animation that comes already on it. Now, it, this one is just an AJAZ like boot logo um, animation, but we can download it and we could store it as a file in case we ever want to re-upload it. But I went ahead and picked this um, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs uh, landscape animation. Always hit the time sync and then we upload it to the keyboard. Now, surprisingly, this is the fastest that I've seen this particular GIF upload to a keyboard. It took a matter of 15, 20 seconds, and it was uploaded and it immediately loaded up on the screen. And it looks quite, quite crisp and clear in my opinion, uh, especially because of the angle that the screen is at. Now, user lighting, we can go ahead and create as many user lighting effects as we'd like and we can either mass select keys and change the color, or we can just select a few of the keys and change the color. For real-time lighting, that basically gives you the ability to create your own sort of lighting effects. And then of course, on the last screen, we have the settings screens where we can set the driver to automatically start. We can change the language of the software. We can set the sleep interval for the keyboard to go to sleep when it's on wireless mode. And we can also set the key response time. <clears throat> so we have fairly standard software. The software has gotten much better. And at least we do have that function layer. Now, granted, we have a TKL. So you practically have all the keys minus the numpad. Um, I personally, I use a numpad on the side, but I enter in a lot of numbers. Not everybody needs that. Um, but at least we have the ability to not only change the top layer, but the function layer. And as I said, you can have a toggle layer, um, which is toggling on and basically making all the keys on that layer as if function was being held down. Or you have the momentary where it's hold function and the key so that you can get that effect or whatever or if the key is mapped to a macro if it's mapped to a just a different key because you like it in a different spot i mean i usually will map delete the under layer to insert but i've got them both here so i don't need it now to go over how the screen works uh, just a little bit for function to to see the animation that we have already loaded up on there we use function home to switch to the animation screen we can use function home to go back and we can use function insert to turn it off. Function insert would turn it back on as well. Now, <clears throat> while you're in this mode, this is just going to be your volume control. Now, obviously you do have the indicators. We can see that we're in win mode, we're in USB and numlock is enabled, even though we don't have a, a numpad on here, but that's neither here nor there. Now, if you hold down function and press the knob just once, you are now going to go into a control panel mode where you can select the different effect. You can select different colors. You can select the brightness, the speed of the effect. You can change language and it goes back to the screen, but it's always going to be back on the screen. So, if you want it to stick to the screen, then again, you go back to the screen, function, press on the knob, and then it's back to volume control. And as always, function home will switch you between the animation and your information screen. So <clears throat> I have to say, I've yet to find the perfect screen, but I am seeing them get much better. I actually like how this one works. 
feels like they put a little bit more thought into it. I mean, I only had to read the instructions once and I'm like, okay, I get how this screen works. It's very intuitive. I am quite enjoying this, uh, this TKL, the Ajaz AK870, though I did see it mentioned as the Max in the manual. It, I don't see it listed as Max anywhere else, um, which I guess becomes confusing with a couple of the other ones. This one just says RGB DIY. Uh, DIY usually means bare bone, but I can't complain. The switches on here, though I've never heard of them, they're actually decent linear switches. The keycaps feel nice, they look nice, um, and they're 1.5 millimeters thick, so they actually sound nice as well. Uh, the Legends, they're not perfect, but I'd give them like an 8.5 out of 10. But again, this is a preloaded keyboard. For what this is, it is a useful, multifunctional, TKL that also works in three modes, has a pocket for the 2.4 gigahertz dongle, um, charges up the battery pretty quick. I haven't had it plugged in all that long. We're already at three out of five bars, but has at least that displayed on there. And it's nice to have the actual time instead of 2099 though. Hey, it would have been nice to travel. Here we go. Let's make a movie about a time traveling keyboard. You type in the year that you want to go to and take the keyboard with you, and there you go. The time-traveling mechanical keyboard. No? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Hollywood would buy that pitch. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of this Ajaz AK870 with a Maillard, Maillard? Not Mallard, but Maillard linear switches that have a um, pretty decent weight to them. And... We have the double shot PBT keycaps, the Cherry Profile, and it really is a decent um, keyboard. I do hope that you guys enjoyed uh, the review of the AK870 and the, the sound test I'm going to leave you guys with. A thumbs up, a subscribe does go a long way, but I'll definitely be coming back to this keyboard at some point in the near future. So if you have any questions, any comments, shoot them down in the comment section below. I want to wish everyone watching an awesome day and a wonderful rest of your week. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.